Hello and welcome to this week's assembly. We've got a very special guest joining us today to answer all of your science questions. My absolute pleasure to introduce Professor Lord Robert Winston, who is a scientist, a medical doctor, and a member of the House of Lords, which is part of the UK's Parliament. He's going to be joined today by our friends from Frank Wise School in Banbury, who are going to be asking him some questions. Let's hear what they've all got to say. Professor Robert Winston is a renowned scientist, television presenter and writer of science books. He has written a number of science books for children and today pupils from Frank Wise School in Banbury get to ask him as many science questions as they can pack into eight minutes. And your name is? Dan. Right, okay, so what's your question? Where? Uh, in the Animals go at night. Well, it depends on the animals, because some, um, some animals will uh, be hiding in trees. I mean, probably for many animals, um, even big ones like leopards and small ones like birds, the safest place is actually in the tree. And some animals are very good at disguising themselves. So leopards actually... Uh, if you go to the jungle and you can, you, it's very difficult to see a leopard even when they're in the tree because they are so well camouflaged. There are some animals, of course, which are much more active at night. So some, uh, some bats are much more active. The vampire bat comes out at midnight and looks around to find a sleeping animal that it might suck the blood from. That's why it's the very famous bat. And the, the other animal I can think of is the panda. Uh, some pandas only come out at night. They're nocturnal animals. They like the dark. That's when they feel safest. You've tested my knowledge of zoology uh, um, unmercifully, really, but there we are. I've done my best. How do you grow crystal out of ground? So crystals grow in different circumstances, and crystals are one of the most puzzling aspects of, of chemistry. It's amazing how crystals form, and it's due to the structure of the molecules. But essentially to make a crystal, and you can do this yourself, is to make a very, very saturated solution. So if you take, for example, a cup full of warm water, the warmer the better, don't make it too hot so you don't burn your fingers, and pour lots and lots of salt into it, a huge amount of salt, as much as you can dissolve. If you get all that dissolved, then you have an extra amount of those molecules in the water, and then they will try and find a surface on which to grow. So if you stick in, let's say, a pin on the end of a string uh, or a wooden stick, those molecules of salt will grow around and form crystals. And actually, you can make the crystals very pretty coloured. If you put some, if, if it's salt water, for example, you can tip in some vegetable dye, say red or blue or green, and you can make coloured crystals. But if it's salt, don't eat it. If it's sugar, by all means, eat it, if you don't mind your teeth. I'm next. So your name is? Fizan. Fizan, okay. Fizan, yes, okay. So tell me, what, 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 what do you want to ask? How do you make a vaccine for COVID-19? The proper name of the virus is COVID-2, actually. SARS-CoV-2 is its real name, but we call it COVID-19. The, the names don't matter, but it's, you, we're both talking about the same virus. Now, the virus, the coronavirus, the coronaviruses, because there are a number of them, some coronaviruses cause, cause the common cold, um, and some, of course, uh, cause things like SARS, and this current epidemic is caused by COVID-2. <clears throat> now, the, the viruses are very, very tiny. They're the smallest particles that are living that we know. They're much smaller than bacteria. But the, the, the COVID um, has, the coronavirus has spikes. So if you look at my hand, you have lots of spikes coming out of that, of that, um, that's right, coming out of that. And those spikes are made of protein. And these spikes are very important for the virus to survive. In order to survive, those spikes need to stick on an animal or human tissue, usually in the throat or the gut or somewhere on the surface of an organ. And one of the popular ways of making a vaccine is to try and interfere with the protein which makes those spikes. Because if, if we can damage the protein which makes those spikes, then the virus can't work. So that's one way we do it. <clears throat> and another way is to change 
the the way it replicates because of course virus have to multiply and more and more vaccines are looking at ways of trying to destroy its ability to breed it's a very effective method in the long term so eventually i'm sure we will have a vaccine and some people are already getting injections of vaccine but they won't be ready for the general public for a while yet we're still experimenting i have new gases how do you they help me see your glasses are lenses and lenses are curved bits of glass which either magnify or diminish what you can see and some people who are um for example who have a deficient lens in their eye because the eye has a lens and if that eye if that lens in the eye gets in it is just slightly the wrong shape the glasses are another lens which corrects how the light goes through the eye so in fact what glasses do is to change how the light is magnified or reduced um, and focuses back on the back of the eye which is the retina you can think of the eye a bit like a camera at the front of a camera you've got a lens and at the back of the camera you've got either the video screen the the, the, the digital screen or you've got a film uh, you've got a film which is uh, sensitive to light and the and the and the eye is like that the eye has at the back a retina and uh, and jason at the front it has um it has this lens it's not right at the front because there's a very fine covering in front of the lens called the cornea but your but your lens can be distorted now you obviously in your case you've got new glasses which look very handsome i've got old glasses which don't look very handsome but essentially we've both got a similar problem. We can't see completely well because our lenses are slightly different from normal. So our glasses do that job for us. They refocus the light so that it gets onto the retina and we get a clear view. What makes the sound of thunder? What makes the sound of thunder? Yeah, well, that's a really interesting question. Basically, the sound of thunder is simply caused by an electrical discharge. Thunder is made by very, very powerful electrical forces, many millions of volts. Um, and, and obviously, that's why you don't want to be struck by lightning. Uh, people who get struck by lightning generally don't survive. Or, so a few people have done. But on the whole, uh, lightning strikes are pretty dangerous. Um, and, the, and the sound, of course, you hear after you see the spark. You see the spark first, the lightning. And then a second or five or 10 seconds later, you hear the noise because the light travels very fast to your ear and the sound moves much slower through the atmosphere. So you hear the thunder after the spark. Why do we have dreams? Why do we have dreams? Well, it's a really interesting question. We don't know. And we think there are lots of explanations, but none of them are completely clear. Uh, in some cases, we think the brain is practicing because your brain never goes to sleep. Um, I think it's also important to remember that we generally dream most when, our, when we're sleeping lightly. When we're very deeply asleep, we don't dream so much. But, we have, but our, most of our dreaming occurs either as we're just going to sleep or actually when just before we wake up. And sometimes the dream may be so powerful that then we wake up with a, with a judder. Thank you, Pleasure. Nice talking to you. It's wonderful to talk to the kids. I mean, they ask really very, very difficult questions, actually, very complex questions. And I'm afraid I may have given rather, well, somewhat convoluted and tricky answers, but I hope they enjoyed it. Basically, all this really originally came from this book. Some time ago, I wrote a book called Ask a Scientist, which was started, really, with primary school children who always ask me questions when I go to schools to teach. Don't stop asking questions. Don't be embarrassed about asking questions. And the other thing is, it's always worthwhile doing things that you don't think you can do very well, particularly experiments, for example. All the very best to you and good luck with your career. Hello, my name is Mrs Buckmeyer and I'm a maths teacher at Oak. Thank you, Professor Robert Winston and the students at Frankwise. You asked some fascinating questions. Now, we know it's nearly the end of term and you're all excited to enjoy the summer holidays. So it's amazing to see that you're all still working hard and wanting to show us your work. The artwork in particular this week has been incredible. The animals you've been making out recycling, 
very good. Now next week will be our last assembly of the term. So if you want your work to be shown in, then get a parent or carer to share on social media using the hashtag LearnWithOak. Wasn't that fantastic? I am sure you enjoyed that as much as I did. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Professor Winston and to the pupils from Frank Wise School in Banbury for joining us today. Two exciting things to keep your eyes peeled for at Oak National Academy. The first is Earth School, a school where you can learn all about the climate emergency with our friends at the United Nations. And the second is a very exciting partnership that we have with BBC's Radio 1 as we head towards the end of term. We'll be talking more about it very soon. Have a great week, keep working hard, keep listening to your teachers and we look forward to seeing you soon.